Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Tinkercad. Now, this will be the first video in a series for absolute beginners, and I'm going to take you through opening up Tinkercad for the very first time and creating your first object with the intent to 3D print it. Now, I do have another video um, before this one that was basically just helping people narrow down what 3D modeling program they should use um, if they're interested in learning how to 3D model for 3D printing. So if you are interested in that, I will put a link up in the corner or down in the description. But I recommend it for complete beginners to using any sort of 3D application to start with Tinkercad. So I don't want to ramble too much. Let's just jump right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to Tinkercad.com um, and you will need to create an account. But as soon as you do, it should land you on a page similar to the one I'm looking at right here. They may have some tutorial type stuff popping up on the screen. Um, and feel free to follow that as well as this video. Uh, you probably won't see any projects here just because these are some things I've created. Um, I do have more creations than this. It's just on a different account than this one. But in order to start modeling, what we're going to do is click this create new design button. So as soon as I do that, it will load up a new page and basically create an empty project for us. It will give it a name up in the top left and it's just something auto generated. So you can leave that or you can change it if you want to just by clicking on it. And then you'll see we have this empty grid out here called the work plane. And this is where we're gonna do all of our modeling. Before we get into any of that, I wanna talk about how to navigate around and move the camera basically. This is all going to be done with the mouse and there are three forms of movement. We have zooming, which is just your scroll wheel. You can zoom in and out. We can pan the camera using the middle mouse button. If we press it down and hold and move our mouse around, you'll see I can pan the work area around. And last but not least, we have rotation, which is the right mouse button, click and drag, and we can rotate the plane around and look at our object from different angles. You will use the left mouse button, but that is reserved for selecting objects. As you start to learn more 3D applications, um, you'll notice that each of them have their own control scheme for moving the camera around. Um, it can be kind of annoying, but uh, just spend some time with it and you'll get used to it. So next up, over on the right side, we've got um, a bunch of shapes we can use. And really at its essence, that's what we're gonna be doing with Tinkercad is using shapes to make other shapes. Um, you'll have a drop down here that has a bunch of stuff in it, but don't worry about that right now. We're just gonna focus on the basic shapes. So say that I want this box out there, what I can do is hover over it, click and drag out onto the work area or the work plane. And as soon as I let go, that object will be placed there. And you probably notice this other box over on the right pops up. And this is basically our options for this model. Um, don't worry about hole right now, we'll get into that. So disregard that for the time being. Um, this is basically just a color. So if you click on this, you can change the object's color if I wanted it blue. I'm gonna leave it as red for the time being. And then you can mess with these other things as you want. Uh, some things are dependent on other options. So if I move the steps up and down, you can see that nothing's really changing. But if I move this radius up and down, you'll see that it starts to round out this cube. So now we have a rounded cube and now you can see what the steps are actually doing. If I turn them down, you can see that there's a lot less facets or faces around um, the object. But if I crank it up, there will be more. So feel free to play with those as you want, but for right now, we don't need to worry about them. As I mentioned before, the left mouse button is reserved for selecting things and also deselecting them. So in order to deselect this, you just click off of it. It is no longer selected, and then you can click back on it and we've got it selected again. If you have multiple objects, there's also a box select. You can select all of them by just clicking and dragging. So if I select this cube, you may notice that there's a bunch of boxes and little arrows around the object. And if you watched my previous video, this is Tinkercad's version of that 3D gizmo. Uh, pretty much every 3D modeling software has some form of this gizmo that allows you to move the object, scale it, and rotate it. And that's exactly what all of these do. These little boxes around the object are for scaling. So if I grab one of them on the side, I can scale it to be bigger or smaller there. Front and back do the same thing. If I click on the corners, I can scale in two directions at once. And then there's one on top of the object so I can make it taller. Now, um, keep in mind that if I rotate the camera underneath, the box will move to the bottom so I can scale it down underneath the work plane if I wanted to. And that's all dependent on where the camera is looking. 
So that's just a little tip in case you're confused as to why that is or isn't where you think it should be. Also something to note with these scale boxes, um, if you want to scale something uniformly, meaning basically keeping the same shape, but making it bigger or smaller, because like if I click this and drag it out, it's no longer the same shape. It went from a box to being a rectangular box. So if I just wanted to make it a bigger box, I can hold down the shift key while I'm dragging these and it will get bigger or smaller and keep the same um, shape basically. And you can do that with any of these. I can do it on the top one. I can do it with the corner ones. You can move this box by just clicking and dragging on it. Um, but you'll notice that it's kind of stuck to the work area here. So this little cone on top of the object is how you move it up and down. And once again, if you rotate below the object, the cone will be on the bottom. So you can grab it from there as well. Last but not least, we have these arrows that are on each side of the cube. And if I hover over them, you'll notice that it brings up a wheel um, with a bunch of notches, kind of like a clock. And this basically shows you um, that you can rotate it. So if I click and drag, you'll notice that I can rotate this object around. If I keep my mouse on the inside of this wheel, it snaps to these inside notches basically at a 22 and a half degree um, increments. So that makes it really easy to quickly get to 45 or 90, some of the most common um, angles you'll want things at. If I move my mouse outside of the circle, you'll notice that it's moving in one degree increments. This is just to get a more precise result. Um, if you do something to your object that you don't like, you can just use Control Z to undo. So I can undo all of these different things that I've done to this cube and get it back to the state when I just inserted it. And Control Shift Z is redo, or there are buttons in the top left for redo and undo. If you wanna get rid of this object, you can just hit delete on your keyboard. I'll hit Control Z to bring that back. Or if you have it selected, there is a trash can icon right here. I'm gonna drag a cylinder in here just so we have another object to mess with. I want to quickly go back and talk about navigation because I know the first time using 3D applications, um, it can be pretty easy to get lost. Like say that I end up moving, I press a couple wrong buttons and my camera's out here. And no matter what I'm rotating, I can kind of see it over there, but it can be hard to find. So if you ever lose your objects and you just need to get back, over on the left-hand side, we have a couple options. We can hit home and that will just take us right back to this exact view. So then you can zoom in and go back to whatever you're working on. Um, if you have an object selected and you're out here, you can click this little button over here, fit view to selected shapes, or you can hit F on the keyboard and it will zoom into whatever object you have highlighted. If you have no objects highlighted, you can still do it. It just uh, takes you to a view that will show you all the objects that are on your bed. So Tinkercad makes it pretty easy to navigate around and help you not get lost. So now you can navigate around, you can bring these objects out here and start moving them around, squishing them, rotating them. But the real power of Tinkercad comes from combining objects. And we can do that by, well, first of all, I'm gonna make these overlap and I'm gonna move this up just so we can see a little bit better. So in order to combine these, I need to have them both selected. So I can either click on one and then hold shift on the keyboard and click another, and that will highlight them both. You can see they both have that blue border around them or you can just click and drag and use the box select and it will select both of them. Now, if you look at the top right above your shape options, you'll notice there's a button right here called group and you can use control G if you'd rather use it on the keyboard. But if I click that, it will merge these two objects. You notice that they both turn red and you can change the color if you want. But now if I click on either of them, you'll notice that they are just one solid object. Tinkercad will treat this as one object, and if you want to separate them, you can click this um, ungroup button or use Control shift g and it will separate them back out. So I'm gonna go ahead and group these up again, and it's time to show you what that whole button is. So I'm gonna bring a sphere out here, and I'm gonna place it right about here so it's overlapping with both of these. Maybe I'll move it down just a little more and this way a little more. So now, since I have this sphere highlighted, I can click that whole button and you'll notice that it turns semi-transparent. This is basically indicating that this sphere will be cut from whatever object it is combined with. So if I shift click on the other object we have here and click group, now it becomes one object, but that sphere, instead of being added to it, it is subtracted from it. 
So that's where the real power of Tinkercad comes in. Basically what you'll be doing is using basic shapes and booleaning them together or grouping them as Tinkercad calls them in order to create more complex shapes. And that's what we will be doing in the next episode. We'll be using some of these features and some of the more advanced features to create a more complex object. But I think I've thrown enough at you for one video, so take this knowledge and just mess around. Don't have any specific goal in mind. If you want to try and recreate an object, go for it. But don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just mess around and see what you can do in here. If you have any suggestions for what I should make in the next video or even in a future video, um, just if you're curious how to make something in Tinkercad, leave me a comment down below. Well, thank you for watching. Um, if you're watching this video in the future and I have the next uh, video in the series out, I will create a playlist and I will link that up in the corner, a little, the little eye in the corner. And then that's it for me. So thank you for watching. And until next time, keep creating.